This video is sponsored by Skillshare, a place you can follow online video tutorial almost about anything. So thank you for Skillshare to sponsor this video that you guys already asking for it is that how I how is my workflow of video editing and I'm going to also talk about color correction as well. Some of you guys also ask about how to do color correction because I know that it is uh, one of the hardest thing to learn for new video editor. So this is a quick quest course um, or it's just about how I do my stuff. I, I hope that it will be useful for some of you guys. Um, obviously I'm not really good at making tutorial video and I can't keep doing tutorial video all the time. But that's why uh, Skillshare exists. Now some of you guys may know that I use Final Cut Pro as long as the iMovie Pro. But I like this a lot. Uh, let me show you what you will get from Final Cut Pro. I usually create a new library for each video. And then I will put in my card. You can import all those footage inside that library. That's what I like to do. Uh, obviously, a lot of people like to use their own file system. So they would go to the Finder or the Windows Explorer, some, something like that. Windows Explorer, File Explorer, something like that. Manually copy those files from their card to the, their own file system and then import them into their Final Cut Pro or Premiere. Now, because of this iMac is quite old, it's a um, 2011 iMac. It's worked really well with 1080 content, but because I shoot 4K, on this machine, I have to do transcripting. So when I import, I will go to here, uh, the transcript, and then click Optimize Media. I have to transcript it into ProRes 422. The file will be much bigger, but then it is less complex, so less work for the CPU to play back or add transition, color correction, this and that. Now on the Final Cut Pro, you got this different window. This is your raw footage. This is the editing, the viewer. This is the setting and below this is the timeline. Now for example, this clip, you can select this bit and then use your mouse to drag it down to the timeline. But this is a slower way to work. The faster way to work is keyboard shortcut. On the keyboard, you have J, K, L sitting next to each other. The middle one, the K, is a uh, pause. J is rewind. Pause it with K and then L is fast forward. So I would use that to position and then I will press I on the keyboard to set the in point. Now you can see that uh, the waveform also helped me to find where I start to talk as well. On here, now go to around, I just use my mouse, go to around the end point, play back, pause that, press O on the keyboard to set the O point and then press E on the keyboard to put it in the timeline. Now what the meaning of E on the keyboard is that put it at the end of the timeline. Now you can see on the, on the timeline, whenever your playhead is at the timeline, you just select that bit in the raw footage window and then press E on keyboard. You just put it at the end of the timeline. What do you do if you want to put something in between, not at the end of the timeline? You place your playhead, maybe I want to put a clip here, in between this back bit. Pick your clip from the raw footage window and then press W on the keyboard. It will put in between exactly where your playhead is. Or you can press Q on the keyboard to put it on top. So this is kind of like two different layer in Photoshop or two different timeline in Premiere.
Now, if I shoot a review, I will shoot like something that I'm talking to the camera, holding the product, something like that. And then I still have to shoot a close up of that product. That's one thing is really good for organizing is setting keyword. For example, this clip of the product, I will have like, like the beginning bit is still kind of wobbly. I'm still positioning my camera. Right from here, it's quite smooth. So I can set the in point. Rewind a bit, set the out point. What I would do is press Command K on the keyboard and then set a keyword for it. Product shots. Now we set all this useful bit of product shot to keyword. And on the left side, you can see the product shot keyword here. If I click here, this is all the product shot that I've got. Now this one is a relatively easy one. Usually I would do this after I've done all the editing. All the editing, transition, music, add, something like that. And at last, I would do color correction. So in here, close it and then turn on the waveform monitor. And then put on the color correction board. Now the waveform monitor tells you how your picture is like. I mean, on the left side, you can see like from zero to 100. This is what your picture data should land in. Now, first thing on the right hand side here, uh, you have three tab here, color, saturation, exposure. I will set the exposure first. This is to represent the highlight bit. This is represents a uh, shadow, and then this is a mid-tone. I will first set the highlight and look at the waveform monitor. Set the highlight to touch the 100 line, and then set the shadow to touch the zero line there. I usually like set the highlight and shadow according to the chart here because you should trust this chart more than your eye because your eye could affect by the surrounding. So now you can set the mid-tone according to your taste. It's kind of like how you want the, the contrast. Now let me find a part that the, the overall color is off. Just this bit. Now my face it's so blue, I'm like an avatar. What I do is also set the exposure first according to the chart here. So I pull up the exposure, I mean I pull up the mid-tone a little bit. Now setting color, you also got three dots here. You can shift the color of your highlight, shift your color, of your mid-tone and or shift your color of your shadow. And this one is called global. It's changed the overall, the whole picture, the color of the whole picture. Now, if all you want to do is correct the color cast because this is so blue, after you set the highlight, the whole picture will be fine. Now you can see the picture is quite blue. So we can position this highlight bit to blue and then pull it down. Remove the blueness from your picture. So pull down a bit. After you remove the blueness, you can then move this dot left and right to adjust the green and red. Pull up the saturation a bit as well because of the color profile I use. Uh, if you only want to correct the color cast, usually you only need to set the highlight bit of your color. For the mid-tone, it usually changes the whole, it changes the whole feeling of your picture. So this is more like for um, color grading. Use the mid-tone, set it to like blueish or kind of warm color to shoot the mood of the video. So this is just really, really basic beginning of uh, video editing, or it's just about how my way is to do with video editing. So there is, I hope you 
learn something there. Uh, there's no right or wrong, to be honest. Now, like I said, I can't keep making tutorial video all the time because my follower don't follow me just for tutorial. But some of you guys want to see my vlog, some of you guys want to see reviews. So this is why there's Skillshare, this website. I quite like the idea of that. Um, to be honest, I never heard of that before until they find me to make this video. But I check out Skillshare, it is actually quite good because on Skillshare, there are people that dedicate on making tutorial videos. And there are a lot of well-made video, well put on, well put, put on, well organized video. Now even I find some of them quite useful for me, I'm going to like this, learn SEO. And there are a lot of tutorials about Photoshop, about any kind of photography, on product shots, landscape, whatever. Now I find this especially interesting. Going pro with street photography, shooting brand lookbook. Now I can't do this kind of photography, but seeing him, seeing how this guy make it is amazing. So I honestly recommend that you check out Skillshare. It's really quite good. And you can have a two month free trial with promo code LOCKJUNG.